Welcome to the video. This is a follow-up video to one I did a while ago. Obviously, I'm up here in the corner. Hello, and again, this is Trappy again. Say hello, Trappy. Hello, what's up? <laughs> so last time <laughs> was a video talking about this stuff here. This is the new TBS Tracer. It's their new 2.4 gig radio system. And last time we learned that really what this is, is this is the crossfire bits uh, that in the radio with the crossfire bits uh, at the other end. And it's just the radio bit in the middle that's gone from eight... Um, 68915 down to 2.4 but the latency is improved and that stuff however you were amazing as viewers and asked loads of fantastic questions now there's no point in me speculating or trying to make stuff up I thought the best way to do it is let's get the man back uh, and we'll ask him um, so that's what this is. This is a follow-up video to answer all of your questions. Time index is below, so each of the questions uh, are, are listed down there. So if you want to jump to a particular point or you want to refresh your memory, jump down there and you can go to the relevant part of the video. I'm just going to run through this and hopefully we'll get through all of them in the time that Trappy has available. Trappy, thanks again for putting time aside to talk to us. Any and, time uh, for you. Bless you. Uh, just to try and get this out of the way. Now, the first and the most important one, now, there is a 25% discount. Uh, I put a note on the last video. So, so if you're a Crossfire pilot, if you get your Crossfire serial number, put it into the system. When you order this sucker, you'll get a 25% discount. Um, and I like that, because. but then, like we said last time, if you're a Crossfire pilot, the, the need for this is probably a lot lower because it's, you know, they're kind of sister products. Anyway, yeah. so the good news on the 25% discount I've got quite a few comments from people who are struggling to get that to work. Are there any particular tips? Uh, is it worthwhile talking about where you get the serial number for your Crossfire unit from and where you put it in on the website? Yeah, so you have to be logged into the TBS agent with the same account that you log into our TBS website. So they're the same user account, and you actually have to be logged into the TBS agent and plug in the Crossfire so that it registers with the cloud, which will then activate your discount code. So I, th I think that's where most people were struggling with. Right. Um, so if uh, the serial number is just, it's a three digits um, with a dash, and then I think it's another eight digits in the back. So that's pretty straightforward. And if it doesn't work, just create an order and don't pay, and then uh, create, a, create a support ticket um, on our website and basically paste us the, the serial number, and then we'll do it for you in the back end. Fantastic. That's great. That that might be the problem then. I'm guessing. So you you're automatically linking through the Crossfire serial numbers. So uh, so one person I guess can't just give all their mates their Crossfire serial number and uh, everyone use them. So I'm sure people have thought about that already. Well, you know they're they're consecutive numbers, right? So they're pretty easy to guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not going to bleep that bit, but you know they're they're all no, out there, right? That's that's fine. That's fine. Because right? okay, right. there's just serial numbers, so uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Okay, next question was from user 1982, and he asked, does it work with radios like the Futaba 14SG? Uh, it's probably worthwhile just before I, I hand over Trappy explaining. Any radio that runs OpenTX uh, that's reasonably recent will have inbuilt support for um, CRSF, for the Lua scripts, they'll be on the SD card automatically. All that stuff will just work with Tracer. There's nothing different you have to do. So qu questions about things like, uh, we'll come on to it later about using the QX7 inverter mod. Um, a lot of the answers are the same whether or not using Crossfire or Tracer. But let's talk about non-OpenTX radios like the Futaba 14SG. Um, I, I'm guessing it will work, but you have to use PPM. I'm actually just checking whether, because there are a couple of Futaba radios that do support um, Crossfire. And I'm guessing the 14SG is one of them, just based on, um, since you were asking a question, I just Googled it, and it looks okay. like it does support it, but it will need a firmware update. Um, so just Google it. If you can find a Crossfire or CRSF update for your Futaba, then it will work. Brilliant stuff. Otherwise, you have to use PPM, which will obviously also work, but then you, <laughs> there's really no point in using the tracer because you're adding latency. Well, and, and, and let's talk about that. So with PPM, it's not a bi-directional thing, so you're not going to get telemetry back, and it's a slower link as well. So yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah, it, it's like buying a Ferrari and taking the motor out. So it just it, it's almost no point. So yeah. let's talk about that because actually it's a really good question. Um, I had lots of people using the terms CRSF and Crossfire interchangeably in my comments. I want to talk a little bit about this because I think it's confusing a lot of people. Um, 
and and I'll cover I'll cover this and Trappy, you know, if, uh, rather than hand it over to you, CRSF is the protocol. It is the the protocol, the language that the radio talks to the module, and then that the receiver talks to the flight controller in your model. CRSF is very high speed, very low latency, and bidirectional, so it also brings the telemetry back to the radio. CRSF is not Crossfire. CRSF is yeah. also on the tracer. Crossfire is the hardware that is the module and the receiver, just like Tracer is. So Tracer and Crossfire are the hardware radios. CRSF is the high-performance protocol that you talk over them. And hopefully that clears that up a little bit. Um, CRSF and Crossfire are, are talking about two different things. Um, okay, right. So, uh, good. You were nodding all the way through that, so I haven't cocked that up. Um, and I'm, apologies, I'm going to completely cock this name up. Svetlin uh, Simonov uh, asked, any plans for a full module like the TBS Crossfire uh, with the buttons and the mini screen? Because at the moment, you know, it's it's the one that doesn't have the screen on the back. My Crossfire has the screen, and I actually quite like that because you have all the displays on it. Any plans to do a tracer with that screen and those extra pieces? There, there are several plans related to this sort of thing. Um, however, I'm not going to go into specifics. So, um, if you can you can safely get the the Micro TX because there are like there's no current prototype of a full size module for the tracer in the works, but there are a lot of plans related to that. Okay, all right. So so watch this space is the answer. Hannes Bosman or Janus Bosman. Apologies again, completely destroying these names. I'm really sorry about this. Any plans for Tango Two with it in? Because obviously the Tango is your little radio. I've got one here. It's got Crossfire built in. It's awesome for smaller quads and mini wings when you're hiking up a mountain. You don't have to carry a big radio. Uh, people are asking, do you, are you going to make it with this in as well, or with some way to pop it in? We we did initially plan on making a Tango Two um, tracer. But people wanted the multi-protocol module so badly that we added a bay to the back. And then at that point, there is no, there is no real reason to make um, a Tangle 2 tracer. You can just get the Nano TX and plug that into the back of the Tangle. Okay, all right. So the answer is not, not anytime yeah. soon. Cool. Not anytime soon. All right. Tokyo Dom asked a really good question. Will this get the Japanese... You're probably going to pronounce this better than I. Uh, Gitiki certification? Gitiki, yeah. Um, oh, I'm so it, close. <laughs> it, it does conform with those regulations. Um, we are currently, I, I think we're already done with CE and FCC. So these are prerequisites to get that certification done. Because you guys are pretty good on the website. You have all your letters of conformity and all that stuff for CE, which is why in the EU... TBS stuff can be sold because in uh, yeah. particularly in the UK they're really cracking down on resellers stocking anything that doesn't have full letters of conformity and that's not just sticking a CE sticker on the back by the way that's there's an awful lot more so involved. I've heard yes <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised how many things I get in here that just have the CE <laughs> sticker stuck on the back you can still peel it off next one uh, take it to the ground a really good question going back to that QX7 question do you need the QX7 inverter mod to run it? Just to pre-see that. So with the Crossfire system, uh, FreeSky did some really weird stuff where they started using slower, cheaper inverters in their radios. It looks like they've changed their mind about that recently. But that means that a whole batch of radios like the QX7 have the slower inverter in it. If you want to run that CRSF high-speed, low-latency protocol that we talked about, see the answer to question three, uh, then you need the higher speed inverter. Now, TBS sold a little kit, and in fact, the last couple of TBS bits I've had in here, you actually include the little board now anyway, yeah. just as a, a thing. And you have to solder that into your radio in order to run CRSF at full speed. Now, in OpenTX, there is a way with modern OpenTX for you to select to run CRSF at kind of slower speeds, so that still allows you to get that uh, bi-directional telemetry goodness without getting all the issues and having to put the hardware in but is this all the same with tracer it's it's all the same yes we we opted not to um to change that just because that would um harm the telemetry the amount of telemetry that we can put through the system um so there is still a requirement if you want the full low latency link that you have to use the inverter mod but all the devices that could potentially need them come with the inverter mod shipped. 
So the Nano TX does not come with the inverter mod because all Nano TX capable radios are already um, ha already have the higher speed. As well as I think in the last six to twelve months, I think no radio has been sold that needs the the actual inverter mod. Be uh, ever since um, Effersky launched Access, the, their new protocol. Um, all the radios come with the high-speed inverter included. Okay, that's really good to know. Okay, so you have a, if you have an access-capable radio, it'll run CRSF at full speed. That's yeah, well, without that's... any soldering. Uh, okay, next one then. Uh, thank you. Take it to the ground. That was a great question. Uh, Change agent asked: Does the three millisecond latency work out to the twenty kilometers range? Um, really interesting question here and I, th I think this is kind of going to an underlying question that we're going to come on to later normally with long-range systems the latency increases slightly uh, even because what happens as you go farther away the system kind of drops more and more stuff off so things like Mavlink for example with Crossfire that's one of the things that kind of gets uh, throttled yeah. back and turned off eventually when you go out to extreme range um, we talked last time about it being the I love this analogy but by the way the whale versus the machine gun, <laughs> which will forever be the way I describe long range versus short range systems. It's a really good question. Do, are we still machine gun when we're out at 20, at 20 kilometers range that gives us three milliseconds? Yes, technically it takes, uh, I actually looked this up, it takes 60 na um, nanoseconds or, or, or microseconds, I, I can't remember. It, it takes 60 of whatever quantities less than milliseconds right. for your signal to go that far. The full um, radio link goes. However, it's not bidirectional. So um, you have 100 milliwatts on the uplink, um, and you have less than that on the downlink. So you will lose um, telemetry. In our tests, we've we've taken telemetry to about 14 kilometers, um, but it started getting spotty at 10. Uh, that kind of leads me nicely on to David Brown's question. David, thank you for this. Uh, and also, uh, did you get full telemetry at range? I guess that's answered it for you, David. Uh, the answer yeah. is 20K, no. 10K in the testing that TBS have done, yes. Now, Mr. Macabre FPV, uh, again, horrible pronunciation of the name, and I apologize unreservedly. Uh, how does the latency compare with CRSF shot? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what CRSF, because it's not here yet, right? It's something that lots of people are talking about, and it's a it's a technology that's coming. Yeah, it's tricky to compare something that exists with something that's still in development, but if you can talk about yeah. that, that would be great. So CRSF shot is something that we developed on top of CRSF, which synchronizes the radio, uh, synchronizes your, your OpenTX radio to your radio module. Traditionally, both are running on separate cycles, yeah. So they're basically both beating their own drums. Yeah. Um, and CRSF shot is is a way to synchronize those drum beats, so that every time you are sending out a packet, um, OpenTX generates a new set of information to send out. So Tracer runs on CRSF shot, Crossfire runs on CRSF shot, but you need a CRSF shot capable OpenTX build, which we have on our website to download. Okay, and it's uh, in the list to come out officially supported in general OpenTX uh, soon. You know, watch two point four. Yeah, yeah. Watch your release. There's loads of really good stuff in two point four. I can't wait. Uh, my module when I showed it up, loads of people. I, I just have Im uh, visions of people kind of pausing the the screen and going like that and having a look on the back of mine. And again, this is development kit, right? Uh, that which yeah. is you know it's kind of the pre-release stuff I was playing with. It says two watts on the back. Now, yeah. you talked about max power, and everyone was immediately, but hang on a minute, yours says two watts on the back. Can you talk a little bit about that? So yours is a development unit that we shipped out. We Luckily, we caught that, because this is actually the the FCC ID of the two-watt full-size transmitter. So that would have been a serious uh, oversight if we had included that in the final shipments. <laughs> um, so we did change the sticker. Okay, okay. So it's, it's the same radio inside, it's just the sticker that's different. Is that what we're saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. So the, max the, the sticker is wrong. Don't read anything into the two watts. That's from the two watts crossfire um, system. Right, okay. Somebody was obviously just cutting and pasting a little bit too oh, fast yeah. that day. That's all that was. <laughs> okay, right. So the max the maximum output power of one watt, I think we talked about that last time, is, is the one that it actually is. It's, it's not yet confirmed, but we're for sure going to have um, 500 milliwatts. Okay, all right. 
hundred percent sure of five hundred. You see, I love the way you say stuff like this because you say so, and, and then and then you got that little twinkle in your eye, which means you know. <laughs> but but we'll see. Right. Okay. Uh, Tracer, will it work with the TBS cloud stuff? Um, I'd be very surprised if it didn't. Yeah, lots of yeah. nodding. Um, so just to explain, the TBS cloud is the way that all the TBS systems talk together. Everything from TBS actually has a Wi-Fi antenna in it, including these. Uh, you can get them to talk together. At the moment, you need kind of an access point. And um, I'm probably going to be doing a video on it in uh, probably uh, the end of this month, beginning of next month. I know it's something you and I have talked about for ages. Loads of people are asking for it. Uh, but it means that you can do cool stuff, like you can change the channel on your goggles uh, if you have the fusion module and your receiver uh, will in the fpv transmitter in your model will automatically switch and vice versa and it just kind of joins everything up now on the receiver there's two little baby t antennas lots of people were kind of asking is that real diversity and can you only fly with one antenna on personally my my advice to anyone is if there's an antenna port on a device and it's going to be powered put the antenna on it is bad habit to get into powering electronics without an antenna attached but i'll hand over to you for the for the official answer yeah and in this case it's not a problem so you can use only one antenna if you would like it's not real diversity it's called oh it's called antenna diversity so there is an antenna switch that switches between one port or the other so in terms of um, actual performance we tested it um there's no range difference. Okay, so long so, as so long as your antenna doesn't get whacked completely out of alignment, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But I mean, in that case, it would it would do that as well if you had two yeah. um, separate RF chips. My my personal advice would be: it comes to two antennas. Put the two antennas on. It's yeah. going to cost yeah. you zero weight. It's about you know less than a gram or something. The antenna. Stick it on. Stick it at another angle. It just gives you t a, another chance to not fail safe your model. Uh, why wouldn't you do that? Um, that's kind of the point. And, and one last question. I've had a couple of uh, technical people get on to me um, and really confused about how you're managing to get 10 kilometers range on legal power with telemetry and three millisecond. Um, because normally you are using, you know, kind of LoRa throttling technology. You know, you go back to the whale as you go out to that. Yeah. Loads of confusion about that, how you're doing that. Um, I know you're probably not going to tell me, but I'm guessing this is TBS secret source that you're using. Because you said last time, and I, I know we've talked about it a lot, It's this is not using a LoRa transmission system, is it? Correct. So we, we kind of wanted to offer something different to the marketplace. And there are 2.4 um, LoRa systems on the market, and we have the most popular, arguably, 868915 LoRa system. So having yet another LoRa system just seemed like um, redundancy. not really providing an addition option. Yeah, exactly. Redundancy without giving you redundancy. Yeah. So um, we really tried to get away from this. We found some new technology that gives you pretty solid performance. I know a lot of people are saying, like, how can you get this range? You need at least 100 and minus 100 and I don't, I don't remember, 130 dB or something to get to this kind of range. Um, if you check our video, um, there is actually an RSSI in the bottom right, and it's at 106, 107. Um, so you can see that the sensitivity, um, all of this, you can check all the available data sheets and probably you'll find the one that we use or you won't. Um, all we can say is we've flown this far. Um, if you get the system and you fly it in the situation that we flew it in with the SOC antenna setup, you're going to fly that far as well. Okay, all right. But bottom line is this is this a lot of this is kind of your secret source stuff, isn't it? So you're you're not you're not really yeah. got, you're kind of going to go well. Here's here, here's the result of a year and a half worth of development. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. We, yeah. okay. We'll get we'll get cloned soon enough. I I am sure there are people already sat with a screwdriver and a microscope looking at this stuff uh, because that's the way this works, right? Oh, uh, no. at, at this point, it's expected. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. I still I still remember poor Dominic Clifton when he gener when he created the very first SP Racing F3 board, and he said oh, we were talking when we were doing the release, and he was saying I reckon I get six months, and he got six weeks. Yeah. Before the clones appeared on uh, on shops, it just it is amazing. 
Chappy, thank you so much for the time again and going through that. Um, we'd be going nearly half an hour, so I really, really do appreciate it. Anything else that you've had as questions, common questions that we haven't covered that you've you've had into your guys? No, I guess the biggest question right now is like, if I have Crossfire, should I get the Tracer? I think we answered that pretty much in in your last um, uh, in your last episode. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, it, hope you it, hope you enjoy the systems. They're shipping right now, so they're they're arriving. I think the first people got them today. Yes, actually, I've had a couple of people comment on my video, um, just saying it's here, it's here, it's here. Everyone's excited. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll I'll probably chat to you after this about how I update my dev radio to make sure that it all it, that it that it acts as a real one. And then in the yeah. in the flying that I'm doing, I'm not running on dev uh, dev firmware. But I've got to remove the sticker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've got a, I've got a white pen. It'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks again, buddy. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.